a thread by Carlos Osuida. I couldn't have asked for a better example of British film reviewers' childish anti-Americanism. Rob Ager consistently loses it when reviewing American war movies. In this case, he says, Steven Spielberg promotes war. From YouTube.com, detailed study of the demonization of Germans and promotion of POW executions in Saving Private Ryan by Rob Ager. The reason I hated Saving Private Ryan was that the only soldiers committing war crimes were Americans. Spielberg portrayed the Waffen SS as honorable and merciful. After a Waffen SS soldier stabs to death Private Mellish, he walks past the armed Corporal Upham on the stairs. The SS knight, in Spielberg's eyes, chivalrously spares a man holding a rifle on his lap in the middle of a ferocious battle. Later, Upham murders Steamboat Willie after Willie surrenders. From the beginning of the movie, Americans murder surrendering unarmed soldiers, including two Czechs. When they use the wrong kind of flamethrower on the pillbox the, and burning Germans fall out, Americans yell, don't shoot them, let them burn. Then they're going to murder Steamboat Willie for simply doing his duty. They even make him dig his own grave. Most modern American war movies are anti-American. Fury with, ba with Brad Pitt. Only Americans commit war crimes. Handsome, blonde, Waffen SS soldiers show mercy. Obviously, Spielberg felt guilty about his portrayal of Germans in Schindler's List, so he made Americans the villains in Saving Private Ryan. The fact is that deep down, a hell of a lot of people admire the Nazis. It's not that I agree with Nazism, but you have to admit that. I recommended this movie earlier today. Here's a good copy of it. Death Race, 1973. No politics, no agenda, no teachable moments, and definitely nobody telling us that he's helping us learn. Just a story. I'm sure people who hate Americans will hallucinate something about it, but let me tell you something. Hate goes both ways. I hate people who hate Americans. See how I didn't say I hate British people? I was once an Anglophile before they ruined their culture. We went to London so many times in the 1970s. Everything was magical. The food was great. People were nice. I was even almost killed in London by the Irish Republican Army. On a path in Regent's Par on July 20th, 1982, my brother and I turned left instead of right and barely avoided the nail bomb that the brave lads of the IRA set off under the bandstand. Seven soldiers were killed and eight civilians wounded. I hated the Irish, all of them, for 20 years. I still have severe PTSD from the bombing. My brother and I felt the blast wave. For the 20 years that I hated the Irish, I looked for movies that showed terrorists being killed. The British Army taking care of IRA terrorists in The Crying Game. I could watch hours of stuff like this. But at long last, I came to my senses and stopped hating the Irish. It wasn't justified. My favorite singer is Irish. I can stop hating, despite surviving terrorism that has left me with incurable PTSD, but British people who never had anything done to them by Americans are so full of hate that they invert the agenda of the director. Think about Steven Spielberg is pro-war. Said in all seriousness, the two latest British war movies, Dunkirk and 1917, are somehow soulless. Everything is too antiseptic. The actors are strangely clean and toy-like. The movies have that commu computer game vibe. A spectacular war movie is a very long engagement. Each side has its villains, and each side has those so horrified by everything that they go to extreme lengths to escape it. It's just a great story. Anti-Americanism is a pose. Proclaiming yourself anti-American frees you from doing anything to improve the world.
And guess what? Anti-Americanism is a deal breaker for me. I don't listen to anti-Americans. They make my skin crawl. So I find other sources. I haven't watched a modern war movie since Fury. That was the last straw. Americans are worse than the Waffen SS. Life is too short to waste on hate-based drivel. Battleground, 1949, is the best war movie for combat, and the best years of our lives is the best immediate post-war movie. Totally American and timeless. They use ethnic slurs, so they'll be banned soon.